This is the iPhone 11 Pro, and this is the all-new iPhone 12 Pro. They look a little similar on the surface. Looks can be deceiving, but it's time to go out with the old and in with the new. Let me tell you, 10 new hardware differences coming to the new iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro, and I'm gonna bet you don't know all of them. So I'm gonna kick things off with this newest edition of the iPhone that we are just learning about. Kind of the craziest rumor of them all and something we are just discovering is inside of every brand new iPhone 12. But first, a little housekeeping. Be sure you subscribe to the Apple Circle channel, hit that button down below, and also hit that bell to automatically be notified about upcoming videos because we will have your full coverage of every iPhone 12 model and all of the newest accessories coming in just a matter of days at this point. So make sure you do all that. Also, I wanna make sure you are up to speed with kind of the basics of the iPhone 12, everything we can expect. So let's start off with that very quickly. So here's kind of the Cliff Notes version. Apple is expected to announce four new iPhone models this year, two of the iPhone 12 series and two of the iPhone 12 Pro series. There's a new ultra small 5.4 inch iPhone 12 that some leaks suggest could be called the iPhone 12 mini a larger kind of more standard 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Plus or iPhone 12 Max. And then jumping up to the Pro, we're gonna see a 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro. And then the big daddy of them all, the new 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro Max. A mouthful of a name and a very big phone to match. So a couple of big takeaways here. Four brand new iPhones. The iPhone 12 is getting smaller to this super perfect one-handed phone size, this 5.4 inch iPhone 12. Uh, the iPhone 12 Pro, the smaller one, is getting bigger up to 6.1 inches to match the current size of the iPhone 11 and the larger iPhone 12 series, the iPhone 12 Plus or the iPhone 12 Max. And the big daddy of them all, again, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is getting bigger, going from 6.5 to 6.7 inches, kind of crossing the line on being uh, usable with one hand. This is a very beautiful but gigantic looking phone. And besides the new sizes, Apple is also going to finally tweak the design of the iPhone 12 this year to match this new industrial design language. Uh, very reminiscent of the iPhone 4 we saw 10 years ago, and nowadays very reminiscent of what we have with the iPad Pro and the all new iPad Air. It's this industrial design. It's got the squared off edges. It's a little bit of a, a boxier phone, not uncomfortable, but definitely feels different than the rounded corners we've been used to in years past. It's a bit of a design tweak, which I think at this point we are all very happy and excited to see that the iPhone is just at least changing a little bit in terms of design. Okay, so now that you know the basics, let me tell you about all the biggest changes we are expecting to see in this new iPhone 12 series. And this first one, kind of the newest rumor of them all, is that the new iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro is gonna have this ring of magnets inside. And this rumor kind of sent the Twitterverse and Appleverse crazy over the past couple of weeks on exactly what this thing could be doing inside of the phone. Uh, but it's also important to know, not only is it in the new phone, but it's also built into Apple's new first party case. And there's a couple of very interesting theories on exactly what this is built in for and what its intended purpose is. One of the theories kind of making the rounds is that we're finally going to see reverse wireless charging built into the new iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro. This isn't super crazy if you remember kind of last year, one of the most long lasting persistent rumors up until the day before or the morning of the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro event was that these phones were going to have reverse wireless charging. So you could drop your AirPods on the back, charge them wirelessly and be good to go. And whether it was scrapped at the last minute or it was never intended to happen, Apple never announced it with the iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro series. And that feature just kind of seemed to die right after the event. But maybe it's back this year, and with the addition of these new magnets built into the phone and also built into Apple's cases, this could be the perfect way to somehow initiate this reverse wireless charging capability. That would be super cool, and you can now finally, if you're waiting to wirelessly charge another phone, or probably most likely charge AirPods or AirPods Pro on the back of your new iPhone 12. But another theory, one a little bit more exciting, is that this ring of magnets is intended to be used with a new app. Apple charging pad to ensure a perfect fit every time you lay down your phone. The magnets are going to kind of help it always snap into its correct place. So the phone is always going to wirelessly charge, which kind of lends some credibility to some of the rumors we've been hearing that air power is somehow coming back 
in one form or another. We heard it could be kind of air power in the state we saw presented in a couple of years ago, which never happened to make it to production, or it's going to be some, a little bit of a more less ambitious approach, maybe a simpler wireless charging pad. However it could be, it would make sense on why these magnets are there, then maybe instead of packing this thing with coils, which seemed to kind of lead to air power's original demise because of the heat buildup, that this would be a simpler approach and Apple would utilize magnets to make sure the phone always gets its perfect fit uh, into the sweet spot on the wireless charging pad, so the phone's always going to wirelessly charge. Seems to make a lot of sense and would be super cool to see. What do you guys think? Air power making its return? Yay, nay? Let me know in the comments down below. Next, let's talk about one of the most exciting, one of the most prominent rumors to make the rounds this year, the kind of will they or won't they of 2020, and that is the inclusion of ProMotion into the new 2020 iPhone lineup. Look, at this point, we've seen it in dozens of Android phones. It's become kind of a flagship feature you need to have to compete in even the mid-range and kind of higher level of phones. Apple just needs to do it. Many people kind of think of it as a make or break feature. And we heard they were gonna include it, then they weren't gonna include it. Okay, then they were gonna include it. It was definitely gonna be in the iPhone 12 Pro. And now it looks like based on current rumors and kind of seems to be the trend now, many people agree, it is not going to be in any of the iPhone 12s this year maybe going to be a feature for next year in the iPhone 13. And there's a couple of reasons people are speculating why this happened. Uh, some sources say the failure rate of these phones with the 120 hertz was just too high. They didn't meet Apple standards. They were losing too many phones to faulty uh, units kind of in the production pipeline. So they decided to uh, kind of cancel the feature altogether. Some people are claiming that the phones uh, do ship with a display that is 120 hertz capable, but Apple is turning it off in order to save battery was just taking too much of a hit on the battery, which we'll kind of get back to in a second because we have some interesting battery news to talk about. But whatever the reason happens to be, the lack of 120 hertz and the lack of this ProMotion tech in this year's iPhone is a little disappointing. I know many people who were kind of banking on this to be the real big reason they'd upgrade their phone. I know some people like the co-host on this channel, Matt Gonzalez, uh, kind of could care less if ProMotion was on there or not. I'm someone who kind of really likes it and would love to see it. Uh, but just to kind of uh, be the bearer of bad news, it does not look like ProMotion is coming this year. Maybe next year. Sorry to kill any hopes and dreams, but the consensus is it is just not happening this year. And to break some more hearts and tell you some more bad news, uh, the other rumor we kind of heard for a while was that the notch was finally getting smaller and we haven't seen the notch really change at all in the past three years and this was supposed to be the year it was gonna change. Uh, that also doesn't look like it's happening either. Uh, we had seen some CAD renders and we're believing that the smallest 5.4 inch iPhone is gonna get a slightly smaller notch just so Apple can fit all of the information they need to uh, in the upper left and right hand corner to kind of keep it in parity with other phones like uh, the battery indicator and Wi-Fi availability and cellular and stuff like that. Uh, but the notch is not getting any kind of significant shrinkage like we originally thought a few months ago. And speaking of things getting smaller, kind of circling back to my battery point uh, just a minute ago, uh, we're also learning for some reason that the battery capacity of all the iPhone 12s this year is going to be smaller than their iPhone 11 counterparts. So I'm gonna throw this graph up on screen so you can kind of take a look for yourself and kind of see a one-for-one uh, one comparison here, but the battery is getting smaller and not just a little smaller, but like considerably smaller than the equivalent phone from last year, which is kind of weird because I thought we all kind of agreed on this unspoken rule a few years ago that look, we appreciate the thinness of Apple devices and thinness of devices in general, but if you have to make the device a little bit thicker to give us better battery life, we are all willing, or the majority of us are willing to make that sacrifice. Doesn't look like that's happening this year. Although these phones look sleek and slim and thin, uh, it looks like that might in turn kind of sacrifice some battery capacity, which is going to be a bummer, but it's also gonna make the job of the new processor inside the A14 Bionic even more important. Not only does it need to be very powerful and it needs to kind of show off what Apple can do with its silicon department, but it needs to be even more efficient because the battery it has to work with is now smaller than last year. 
And we saw Apple kind of touch briefly on the A14 Bionic with the introduction of the iPad Air. It is the chip we uh, kind of all assume is gonna be in the new iPhone 12 series. So we expect Apple to talk a little bit more about it at this upcoming event, uh, but it's gonna be, uh, again, more powerful than the A13 Bionic, more capable, probably a faster neural engine, uh, all the great Apple processor stuff. Uh, but it also needs to be more efficient because that battery is smaller. I'm going to assume Apple is able to deliver the same, if not maybe better battery life by making the A14 a very, very, very efficient processor that's able to be powerful, but also not suck a lot of juice from that battery in the process. And another reason some are a little worried about the battery capacity in the iPhone 12 is that uh, 5G is supposed to be a prominent uh, new feature here in both the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro, which is kind of cool. These new phones will support both of the major flavors of 5G. You have millimeter wave and sub six support built into these phones, but uh, there has been some debate on whether or not that's gonna have a substantial impact on the battery. So turning our attention from the front of the phones now to the back, the cameras in these phones should get better. The image quality should improve. There should be some new sensor technology in all these phones. Apple's smart HDR software processing should get better this year. Uh, video recording in 4K should get better, going up to 120 or maybe even 4K at 240 frames per second. Deep fusion should get even better. Lots of new additions and upgrades coming to the camera on both the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro. But focusing on the iPhone 12 Pro here for a second, this phone should get a LiDAR sensor built into it. Probably rumor is right around here is where that LiDAR sensor will go. And that is going to open the door for a lot of new possibilities with these new phones. Now we don't know if this is gonna be a feature reserved just for the higher end 12 Pro Max, or if this is gonna make it on the smaller 12 Pro as well. But there are a couple of theories on what this LiDAR sensor could do. One of the most interesting theories is that this LiDAR sensor could be used to improve night mode and portrait mode. So the whole idea behind the LiDAR sensor is it's supposed to give you uh, more spatial data to work with. The phone is more spatially aware of the objects all around it. And having that extra layer of depth data could produce some better looking portrait mode photos on the iPhone 12 Pro. We're also hearing rumors that the night mode in this year's iPhone should get better. And there are some theories that LiDAR could also help with that. Again, the more more information that these algorithms have to use and to have at their disposal to process, the better the photos could be and the better that the computers can be at kind of stitching together what it thinks is in the surroundings of the phone. So maybe night mode could get even better and improve with that LiDAR sensor as well. Uh, that makes a whole lot of sense, kind of using it in conjunction with the camera built in to the phone and kind of the phone's built in photo modes. That's kind of the prevailing theory. We don't exactly know what other uses the LiDAR sensor would have with the phone, but again, if Apple is willing to commit to putting them into hundreds of millions of iPhones, then there's gotta be a good reason, and I'm very curious to learn what that reason really is. Another rumor picking up a little more traction at this point after Apple's last event is could we possibly see a Touch ID built into the power button of the new iPhone 12 series because we have it with the new iPad Air? And as much as I'd kind of love to be the bearer of good news for once, I don't think that's going to happen just because from what we know about Apple, they typically kind of lock in the design of next year's iPhone almost a year prior to it actually launching and going into production. So things could obviously change a little bit last minute, maybe like ProMotion, but for something like that to be engineered into the power button and for them to change a bunch of stuff, I don't think it's going to happen because Apple, I don't think expected this pandemic and everything to kind of unfold in 2020 like it has, but I wouldn't count it out for something in maybe the iPhone 13. If this year has taught us anything, Touch ID is not a con in 2020. Maybe it's more of a pro, a nice thing to have. And having both Face ID and Touch ID built into the power button would be super cool to see maybe in next year's iPhone. All right, so now that you know about the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro, what you can expect, the features that will make the cut, won't make the cut and all that stuff, I need to talk about one more really important thing. And that's when these phones are actually going to be available to buy. Uh, in typical Apple fashion, they announce the phones at an event. Uh, a few days later, you can pre-order the devices. And then about a week or so later, you can buy them from a retail store or get them delivered to your house. Uh, we have seen exceptions to this in the past, like the iPhone um, 10 and uh, with other phones, but uh, this has kind of been the ongoing tradition for a number of years. But this year might be a little bit different. There are a lot of different theories on how Apple is gonna launch the phones this year. Are they going to do a staggered launch? Are they gonna launch them all at once? A lot of different rumors, a lot of different theories, but kind of what we know right 
now what we can expect is that the prevailing theory is that there's only going to be two iPhone models launching first. The 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Plus or iPhone 12 Max and then the smaller iPhone 12 Pro in the same 6.1 inch size. So only basically one variation of the screen size of the iPhone 12 launching first. If you wanted the smaller 5.4 inch model or the larger uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max, the behemoth, you might have to wait a little bit longer. How much longer? We don't know, but there is a theory that Apple is gonna stagger the launches and this phone will be the one coming up first and you'll have to wait a, a little bit longer to get your hands on either of these phones. All right, so now that you guys know all the iPhone 12 news, it's time for you guys to answer the very important question. Which phone are you getting? Are you going all the way up with the Pro Max? Are you going with the smallest one, the 5.4 inch perfect one-handed iPhone 12 or Goldilocks right there in the middle with the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 or 12 Pro? I'd love to know. Please leave those uh, comments down below in the comments section. Let me know which one you guys are gonna pick up. I love playing with these dummy models. These are super fun to have. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the Apple Circle. Uh, we sincerely appreciate it. Again, subscribe, like the video, thumbs up. If you haven't already, we would appreciate it. Uh, I'm Robert Rosenfeld. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.